saw the trailer for RHOA. Uh, oh, excited. right. I keep forgetting. I'm what not, do you think? I don't know. I'm not overly excited. I got it. I mean, what 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 are we gonna get on RHOA this season? I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm cautiously. I'm more excited about Potomac. You know, like you know, let's see what happens. Um, RHOC trailer is nowhere. Salt Lake. I guess I'm more excited than I was because last season was so horrible. I don't yeah, know. Oh, yeah. And I did catch up kind of on Girls Trip three. I mean, Leah is just a mess. Just uh, she's fainting. Tell me. Tell me. She's pretending to faint so she can get attention. Giselle and Portia are like calling. Portia is like, bye, Leah. And Leah's like, bye, Portia. I'm like, girl, are you going up against Portia Williams on TV? This ain't going to end well for you, little Miss New York, little Miss fake New York. Um, But she's pretended to, and like Giselle and Portia were like, she's fucking pretending to faint basically for attention. Heather and Whitney, uh, it really, in a way, I guess Giselle and Ro Giselle and Portia, who are close. I mean, don't forget they were on that show, whatever the fuck it was called, with Hannah Burner and Kate Chastain, that nighttime show where they were kind of like the show you and I want to do on a network. They were on that, but oh, so what was that? Yeah, I don't know. it was on I, for I, a hot I, second. I mean, what I I, I I I watched it. I forgot the name, but. Portia and Giselle are kind of comedic relief on Girls Trip. We have Pepsi as, as the host. Pepsi is kind of interested. Giselle's trying to be funny. She's like, we need, like Pepsi is in over his head, this guy, this like new butler type guy that's, he's just, he's never seen women like this before. He doesn't know. He's like, you know, this light, he's a local. He doesn't know what the hell is going on, but ugh, I don't know. I guess Portia and Giselle are kind of the funniest part of it, but I'm not such a fan of either of those two separately that I don't know. The whole thing is just kind of boring to me. It is bad weather. Just had a moment. They made up Whitney and Heather. I don't think it lasts. We know it doesn't really chat last in the room, room, by the way. Chat, chat room. room was that, that was show. It. I don't know if it's still on. But oh God, no girl. That's long gone. Hannah Burner was like not, or Kate Chastain was not a part. No, that's long gone girl. Um, All right. Well, that's Okay. It's not coming back anytime soon. So that's okay. it. I mean, there's a lot of misses and I, I want my next Bravo obsession. I'm here for it. I'm trying. It wasn't Scandaval. Anything else before we go, girl? Well, no, I was just going to tell you, you know, I Dealmaker is the book that Mauricio is putting out. Um, yeah. And like, I do love Mauricio's stories. I mean, he talked about having basically a seance to sell Michael Jackson's, the home that Michael Jackson died in here in LA. Um, I thought that was really interesting because I've, I've gone on a Hollywood VIP tour and they take you by the house and they show you the window of the room that Michael Jackson died in, had the, you know, prop propofol overdose by the doctor and everything. And so Mauricio you know, they couldn't sell that house for a very long time. It did sell back in like 2016. Um, and he essentially says he would show the house, lock it up. He'd come back. There'd be windows unlocked. A chandelier fell from the build from the sky. Like music would be playing. So he basically says, which I just picture Mauricio getting high. And he says he basically went into the room that Michael Jackson died in and said, Michael, please just, I'm trying to sell this house. Please work with me. You know, just don't haunt this place for a while because it, essentially there were these incidents happening and Mauricio had a buyer and the buyer backed out. So the buyer was spooked by these, you know, mysterious things that were happening to the house. Anyhow, the seance, according to Mauricio, somewhat worked and the house sold for $18 million. Now, when I did this VIP tour back in October, the VIP tour guide says that it is back on the market again, kind of silently. They're looking for a buyer. I don't know how the VIP tour guide knew that. I have no idea if that's even true. That's just and what they is told Mauricio us. Is Mauricio selling it this time around? No, it's mm -hmm. no, it's being sold by somebody else supposedly. And I'm just like, ooh, is the house haunted? Like, what is like? Why is that house not? And and our our VIP tour guide told us that it does not appear that the resident, whoever owns it, is like staying there. So I don't know. Michael you know, Jackson. Just some mystery. I mean, I would think some people would want this. You know, haunted by Michael Jackson experience would, well they do but they probably don't have 18.5 million dollars to put up right. i mean the people that have 18.5 million probably don't, don't want to deal that. with a ghost 
That, yeah, I, I mean, mean, that makes logical sense to me. I met, I had Matt Frazier, the psychic on my show. And he said, you know, people come to him. Oh yeah, girl. I had him on twice. Somehow I have between him and Teresa Caputo and Tyler Henry. I, I like the psychics here. He said that people come to him and they want, they want an appearance from Michael Jackson. Like they literally come and they're like, I don't need to hear from my mother or my sister. And that's like, what? Like, that's not how it works. Like spirit comes through if there's something to tell you, like, why would Michael Jackson come through for you? Just so you could fan, there's no message for you. And people would come and want to hear from Michael Jackson. And he's like, that's not how it works. So, but to your point, I think if you have $18.5 million, you're probably a little spend bit- another. 50,000 on getting a fucking ghost ritter, you know, the Ghostbusters there. It's like, thank you. I'll, I can buy something else in Hollywood and it's, without it's the spirit. It's because he home. died. But I mean, Prince died in the elevator. You don't hear of, you know, Paisley Park. I've been to Paisley Park, by the way. Phenomenal for any Prince fan. You have? Oh, how'd, you, how'd you do that? They, it's they open to the it's open to the public now, girl. You could go, on, go fly to Minneapolis and go. It's really worth the, your while. It's phenomenal. Paisley oh Park, God, Dolly. Know. There's a whole purple no. rain. There's a purple rain room. They have the motorcycle. Oh, honey, I was there for it. But you don't hear about that. I mean, don't people die in houses every day? Like every day, every day. They don't every day. Every I mean, my, day. My, my plan is to die at home. Like if I need to be put into hospice or I don't, I don't want to be in my own home. I mean, I'll be alone because there ain't going to be nobody there on my fucking oh, deathbed. Which, which home? I mean, I don't well, know. I don't know where you you have like that's, multiple residents to fly you back back to the ham where am i supposed to that's get your really, body to get that's a hospice? really good question that's a really good question um that's a good question yeah, let me get back to you podcasting as you're dying like i'm just gonna you know i'll get a lavalier mic and just stick it here so we can do you can grow you can just moan into the get um, some the- ratings honey <laughs> get some ratings but i will be alone i'm on I am on the fast track to dying alone. So there will be nobody there. I'm sure no no one's going to care. I mean, everyone's just going to kick me to the curb. Um, What I'm going to have a love in my life. There's going to be someone like here, like by my side, like a special someone, Uh, not at the rate I'm going, darling. So it'll be alone. And uh, you'll go. Wait, before we go, speaking of ads while David's in hospice, um, not for many years to come, but your brand, many of you work for amazing companies, tech companies companies, clothing companies, you work for banks, you work for the government, you all need advertising. Best what? don't just take our word for it, go and Google. The best way now to get the word out about your business is podcast advertising. David and I collectively together have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of downloads every month. If you want to reach an audience of women, a fantastic LGBTQ plus and a few straight guys, the Sarah Frazier show at gmail.com. This is the greatest place. We not only that, we sell banner ads for our YouTube behind the velvet rope. You can be on our social media. We have thousands of real followers. So please contact us. We would love to work with you. You guys, we stay on the air. This is our full-time job. So we joke a lot, but honestly, we both like we're doing this full time to give you amazing content and you purchasing and becoming our sponsors is how we do it. We try to keep as much of the content free for you as we can while making a living. The Sarah Frazier show at gmail.com. Come be a part of behind the velvet rope slash Sarah Frazier show. Let's make it happen. I was, I'd rather do this than all the other ads I have. I mean, let's do it to people we know here. Yes, um, to people we know and love. And love this you is guys a love community, our community, darling. This is a community. And follow Behind the Velvet Rope, Behind the Velvet Rope on Instagram. And Sarah, we are going to speak very, I mean, very soon. Very.